Welcome back to V8 TV. So we've been talking about ways to maximize a trip to your local chassis dyno shop. And there are things that we think are oftentimes overlooked that can end up eating up your time that you're paying good money to use. So the very first one that I like to say uh, sounds kind of ridiculous, but does the car run? Uh, many times people put a brand new engine in a car or they freshly restore a car and then they take it to the dyno shop. Well, being at the engine or chassis dyno shop is not the time to figure out why the car doesn't run. Anything that you would check before you drove the car for the first time, uh, all the fluids filled front to back. Um, I haven't personally had this problem, but I've seen somebody forget to put the differential fluid in the car, burn up their rear end on the dyno. Uh, brakes working because you still got to get from the street or the truck into the dyno shop and driven onto the dyno. Some of them are up on a lift. Often you got to drive up a hill with the car. Uh, make sure that your clutch or your shifter is working. Um, throttle, that's an important one, uh, especially if it's mechanical. You can physically see it not working. We've been at an engine dyno shop where we noticed we weren't getting a good power number and it's because the throttle blade wasn't opening all the way and it was hanging up on a carburetor gasket. We've also had a fuel injection car that for whatever reason the strategy in the uh, electronic fuel injection with the drive-by-wire pedal wasn't letting that throttle open up. We were only getting 70% throttle. So these are things you can check before you get there because the last place you want to be fixing this stuff is at somebody else's shop on somebody else's time. You want to bring extra stuff for the car. Any of your oils, uh, coolant, because uh, things tend to break, especially if it's the first time out with the car. I mean, we've blown hoses, we've had coolant leaks that appeared once things got hot. And uh, another thing is bring stuff to clean up your mess, because the dyno shop doesn't want to deal with your mess. If your car ends up developing a problem, you know, bring something to absorb oil, rags. So make sure the car starts, make sure the battery is charged, make sure it's got fuel in the tank. Uh, we were on our way to the chassis dyno with a Chevelle once and found out that we were out of gas and you can't really do road force simulations with no fuel in the tank. So simple things that are overlooked. Make sure you've got good tire pressure all the way around. You don't want one tire almost flat and another one overinflated uh, because it might make the car jump a little bit uh, if you lean on it on the chassis dyno rollers. Uh, make sure the car is insured. And the reason why I say that is uh, most of the time, dyno shop sessions are trouble free, but YouTube is full of videos of cars getting loose at the dyno shop and uh, the shop isn't gonna pay for your car. You definitely need some sort of comprehensive policy. It might not even be a bad idea to contact your insurance company and find out what would happen if your car was being worked on and tested and it were to get loose on a dyno and ask the shop what their insurance policy is and uh, read the waiver. Most dyno shops have a waiver that's a lot of fine print on who's responsible for what when something goes wrong. Another one is that when you finally make it to the dyno shop, let the crew do their work. These are the guys responsible for strapping the car down properly, making sure everything is secured and fashioned. You don't want to get in the way. A, you're burning up the time that you're paying for, and B, you're distracting them so that you, know, you don't want them to overlook a strap that isn't fully tightened or anything like that. Another thing to consider when you're at the dyno shop is proper dyno etiquette. Um, if you're not allowed to drive the car on the dyno, you're going to be outside of the car. Uh, you need to make sure that you're away from any cables or data acquisitions and stuff that's between the dyno and the car. You also need to be sure that you are not in front of the car. It's, it's best practice to stay at the doors and back. That way, if the car does come loose, it's not going to hit you. Uh, another thing to watch out for is the rollers are wider than the car so that the dyno can accommodate multiple types of vehicles. You do not want to be anywhere near the rollers when the car is running. Uh, if the roller is running when you uh, walk by it, it will knock your feet out from under you and uh, it will hurt. <laughs> uh, you also don't want to be directly behind the car if it's recently been out on the street. The first couple spins, any rocks and stuff that are in the tires will get thrown, just like you're driving. A lot of times people will drive their car to the dyno strap it down, run it, do whatever they're gonna do, and drive it home. But in the unfortunate event that something doesn't go right, um, and I'm not saying the catastrophic thing where it flies off the dyno, but it's always good to have a buddy handy with another car so you can get home. Um, so 
We like to have a second vehicle with us whenever we go to the dyno shop. A lot of times it's a truck and trailer, if it's a, a new car that's not yet proven on the street, but having a ride home is important. We're sharing more of our dyno knowledge when V8 TV returns.